how much freedom do people have to, if you like, choose their identities and to what extent are they chosen for them? And actually the answer is that it's a, it's a curious mix of both. That in, there are some identities that we, we kind of choose that we, you know, the, uh, the sort of stereotypical example might be we choose our friends but we don't choose our family. Well, that's obviously kind of true in some sense. But nevertheless, we, we, in both cases, actually, it's, but neither is entirely true. We, some, to a certain extent, your friends are chosen as a function of the kinds of, you know, where you went to school and where you live. So actually, you're much more likely to have your friends from somebody you live next door to. And we don't actually choose choose friends from the other side of town or other countries or maybe other uh, social classes and things like that. And by the same token, even within our families, well, we actually make, we, 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 if you like, make choices about which parts of the family we want to spend time with. And we probably spend time with those bits of the family that make us feel better and that we feel better being a part of. So if, if you like, in all instances, there's a kind of a mix of choice and it being prescribed in some sense. But actually that's really critical. The sense that we feel that they're foisted upon us actually has a big impact. We, we identify less with groups where we feel we haven't had a choice in being part of them. But, and and in, in many ways we work hard to imagine or to construe situations in which we feel we have choice. But there are plenty of situations in which we have no choice whatsoever. Um, and that has very particular consequences that we try and, uh, in terms of behavior that our research tries to unpack and make sense of.